Now you're very welcome back. Now research suggests that 50% of the population will suffer from halitosis or bad breath at any one time. So joining us now to talk about this is Danielle Colbert, who's a dentist and specializes in the treatment of halitosis. How are you? Not so bad. Good. Now, I suppose halitosis is bad breath, but are there different types of halitosis? Um, absolutely, and it's probably a show in itself more yes. if I go into it. Um, but the important thing to know is that there are loads of people out there that have halitosis and they need to address it. But there also are a load of people out there that don't have it, but think they have it. And they okay. equally have to address it. Right. But let's bring us back to the basics. I suppose halitosis can be caused by your oral hygiene or the lack of it. Absolutely. And it's age long. Um, I, from ancient times in the Jewish religion, you were allowed to actually divorce your spouse if they had bad breath. Um, it's been documented in manuscripts it's as back as far as the 1550 BC. It's been with us forever. Right. And it's bad breath originating from the mouth most of the time. OK, so let's take a look at the mouth. This is somebody who obviously hasn't been to the dentist for a while because there's massive buildup of plaque here. Is, is that right? Absolutely. And that would be soft to start with, but because people neglect to brush their teeth or do their interproximal cleaning, it becomes hard over time. Right. And when it becomes that hard status, it'll actually push down your gums, leading to gum recession. Okay. And the next photo we're going to take a look at here, there's a lot of inflammation around the gums here. And, and for other reasons, this could be for n neglect from brushing, it could be from uh, intake of different medications, um, it's, it, it could be multifactorial, um, but it's not totally from plaque deposit in this particular circumstance. Okay. Now this is how your teeth should look. These are good clean teeth, you can see between the gums and there's uh, no inflammation there. Uh, well, it's actually remedying. We've removed all the plaque, right. so it'll be a couple more months before we... That's perfect, but certainly we've removed getting there. the source. Okay. <laughs> okay, so how often should we go to the dentist? Um, it's suggested that we go every six months, but right. unfortunately that's not what the Irish population do. Okay. Um, but we would definitely recommend it in the Fresh Breath Clinic. In any dental surgery, your dentist wants to see you more regularly so that we can pick up on things that you won't actually pick up on yourself. Okay, so when somebody comes into you, this is one of the things, this machine here, that is used to detect bad breath. And that is particularly for halitosis identification. That right. would not be um, normal protocol for yeah. most dental examinations. So you blow into this and what do you find then? Do you check the bacteria in the mouth? Um, this is a very selective machine and it will measure volatile sulphur compounds. Okay, and is sulphur what causes, it's like a mineral, it causes the bad breath? Well, they're the main culprits of bad breath, but there are many other culprits in your mouth that come out that can cause bad okay. breath. Let's just look at basics like say, for example, if you eat too much of a certain food like garlic, then you can have temporary bad breath. Absolutely. Right. Um, and spices and onions, um, some raw foods, fish, yeah. uh, in particular sushis. Um, this kind of thing can cause you a temporary halitosis. Right. Beside them are cigarettes. I mean, I'm sure that would cause chronic halitosis in some cases if people don't have good dental hygiene and smoke Absolutely. continuously. Absolutely. And a combination of uh, pathological disease and smoke, there's nothing worse. Right, I see. Okay. Um, on the other end of the scale, periodontal disease. Tell me what that is. Well, periodontal disease is a very common dental infection that a lot of people suffer from and aren't aware of because it's not often painful. Okay. Um, and periodontal disease is very, very highly linked to halitosis. One of the cardinal signs of having severe periodontal disease would be halitosis. Yeah, and your gums start receding with periodontal disease. And there's bleeding and yeah. there's plaque deposits like we saw in the last photo. All right, I see. So if you're brushing your teeth and blood comes out, that means that you could potentially have gum disease. Absolutely. Yeah, so Absolutely. you should go to your dentist straight away. Uh, you surely should. Right. Uh, a question has come in here. My son is 12 years old and he has really bad breath. He is on an inhaler and I tried to make sure he rinses his mouth well, but the smell is foul from his breath. Any advice that comes in was texted into us by Patricia. Thank you very much for that, Patricia. Well, firstly, Patricia should bring her son to the dentist to ensure that there's nothing going on in the oral cavity, that there are no diseased teeth or uh, open uh, cavities. Um, the inhaler isn't a great thing because it can lead to infections in the back of the mouth. Right. Um, so she rightly so, if she's asking him to rinse, it's a good idea post using his inhaler. But a lot of the times when a child is 12 years of age, mm. um, that they normally don't have halitosis or malodor coming from yeah. the mouth for pathological reasons, and it can often be nasal obstruction. So okay. maybe a GP if the dentist doesn't find a source. Okay, if they have maybe even polyps developing or something Absolutely. like that, could, could have an issue with it. Um, when you have bad breath, sometimes you don't know you have bad breath. 
Yeah. And that's an issue. Should you tell the person? Like, it should be important. It's, it's a very difficult area to approach. Absolutely. And I agree because I even find it hard to tell my relatives yeah. or to tell friends that they have bad birth. Uh, and I'm a dentist. You'd think it would be the first thing that would be on my mind. Okay. Um, no, Can you smell your own breath? I mean, do you know you've got bad breath? Unfortunately, you don't. Um, you can't smell it properly yourself. There are tests that people do, cupping of the hands yes. or licking the wrist, but really these aren't conclusive and oftentimes the person is very subjective rather than being of objective. Right. Now, you've, you've, brought a, you've brought a set of fangs with you there and a toothbrush. Now, show us how we should be brushing our teeth. Uh, well, this is where dentists differ, as yeah. you said to me earlier yourself. Yes, I yourself. did, because a lot of people would say, I mean, dentists I've gone to say, you know, always use an elect electric toothbrush, an electronic toothbrush for, for cleanliness. You like the old-fashioned way with the <laughs> manual toothbrush. I do, I do. Manual toothbrush, smaller head. This isn't ideal. We'd probably even like a smaller head okay. because you don't want to Should have... Should it be soft or medium or hard? I, I, I think. All depends on the status of your gums. Okay. Um, I mean, if you're generally healthy mouth, then a medium is perfectly medium. okay. okay. So you said there are six parts that you've got to get to. Absolutely. There's the outer surface, inner surface, and the eating surface on the teeth. Um, and there's exactly the same on the lower, so I would count that as six surfaces. You do two teeth at a time with an appropriately sized toothbrush. Um, you go up on the gum level, uh, right. and then you put your toothbrush at a 45 degree angle, if you can see that. We I'm can not so see sure. that perfectly there. Uh, and then you brush downwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. I do it for each surface that I have to right. clean. So each two teeth get six strokes each and I go the whole way around the mouth in a proper format so that I don't skip any of the teeth on one surface. I do exactly the same in the inner surfaces going two teeth at a time from pink to white until I get to the anterior front six teeth then it's one tooth at a time. You can't do it two teeth at a time so Great. make sure that you go in there one two three four five six one two three four five six until you get to the last segment where it's two teeth at a time again. Great. Do you believe in mouthwashes? Um, mouthwashes are brilliant in their place, but they are very, very temporary when it comes to masking halitosis. Right, I see. Um, they are fantastic when it comes to introducing fluoride into the mouth, and that's very, very important in a topical basis. You don't want to be ingesting fluoride, no, you but don't. topically on the yeah. teeth, it right. is wonderful. There's another issue about fluoride, Absolutely of course, and fluoridation and water and all another that, but just program. spit out your toothpaste is basically what we're saying here. Absolutely. Um, finally, what age should you start brushing your child's teeth? as soon as they have teeth up. And really? at that stage, you should be introducing very soft cloth or so soft, something very, very gentle in the mouth. And they do have baby toothbrushes, which are they very do. gentle. They're so you think, like. but you're supposed to use water up to uh, 12 months, is that right? Water up to 12 months is perfect. And they say once the child can actually rinse and spit out, you should be getting them to use mouthwashes, fluoride mouthwashes, especially if they're in fluoride deprived areas where they have no fluoride in the water. Great. And what about toothpaste for babies? Toothpaste for babies, again, I would stick to ones that are made particularly for babies. They've got a lower fluoride. Excellent. Thank you so much, Danielle. Uh, lots of people, I'm sure, will want to talk to us. Unfortunately, we're always at the stage that we're nearly off air before people get in touch with us. Uh, and lots more questions coming in there, but great to be with us. We'll have to return welcome. to this again, definitely. We put the information on Danielle's Fresh Breath Clinic, which is in Dublin, in Churchtown, is it? It is. Churchtown. We'll put it on our Facebook page.